Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're at Stockton University, and my guest today is Walter Tarver. He's the Director of Career Center for Stockton University. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? Okay, so um, I went to Buffalo State College. I'm actually a native of Syracuse, New York. So a lot of people ask, well, how did you end up in Buffalo? So <laughs> that's how I ended up at Buffalo State College where I got my undergraduate in political science. Great. So uh, usually uh, I just want to go back in time first. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in high school, when did you start thinking about college? Was it freshman year, senior year, were your parents involved? How did it all get started? Um, it, it had always been on my mind, but I think I really probably started to get serious about it towards the beginning of my junior year. Um, I started to look at the catalog. You know, back then everything was snail mail, so <laughs> we were happy when we had any college information in the mailbox at the end of the day. But pretty much my, the start of my junior year. Okay. Um, so you ended up at uh, University of Buffalo, right? Buffalo State College. Oh, Buff There's actually Buffalo two State. schools ah. in, um, in Buffalo, two, well, two Buffalo universities in Buffalo, if that makes sense. There's a yeah. Buffalo State College and there's a university at Buffalo, ah. which we'll get to. Okay. I did end up going there, but we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. So, um, so you're at Buffalo State College, mm -hmm. and uh, how did you get from Buffalo State College to where you are today? Okay. How did, how so, did um, actually, was as I mentioned, I was a political science um, major, got my Bachelor of Arts there, and I, my plan was to go to law school, and I found out that there were joint law business programs which I was always interested in business. I was also always interested in the law aspect. So I figured I can kill two birds with one stone in less time. So um, I actually ended up enrolling at the University of Buffalo's JD MBA program. Ah. And you start the program off in the management classes. During that first semester, my interest in law dissipated. So I decided to focus on the MBA. So I ended up getting my MBA um, at the University of Buffalo. Gotcha. Okay. And then how did you get to Stockton University? Accidentally. <laughs> right? um, I call myself the accidental career counselor. Um, my resume was actually the only resume that was sent. They used to have a program called Resume Referral Program in the University of Buffalo Career Planning Office. Okay. And one of my classmates, um, ironically enough, was pulling resumes that day. And he said, your resume was the only one that was pulled for this job. And I remember yelling back and forth throughout this week, well, where is the job? And he said, Stockton. Now, I thought Stockton, California. <laughs> I'm thinking, I could go live in California. It's warm, nice weather. I'm like, I could do that. So when um, I got, ended up getting a call for an interview, and the gentleman on the other end, my former supervisor, says, yeah, you can fly into the Philadelphia airport. And I'm thinking, why would I fly into the Philadelphia airport to go to California? And that's when I realized it was Stockton University in Pomona, New Jersey. And there's a, apparently there's a Stockton, California, Pomona, California. So you can see my confusion with that. But gotcha. uh, so that's how I ended up here. OK. And how many years have you been? Uh... This is actually my 21st year at Stockton. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So you started in the Career Center? Or did yes. You start so I originally else? started as the coordinator for Career and Employment Services. Um, moved to the assistant director position, um, moved levels within that role, and then when our former director retired, put my hat in the ring to become the director, and here I am. I've been the director now for 10 years. Great. Yeah. So now, let's get into the students sure. and about uh, the career center. Um, what's the process? What, mm -hmm. what happens at the Career Center? Mm -hmm. Anything you could think of that's related to careers happens in the Career Center. So we assist students that are undecided. They may not know what they want to major in or what career they may want to pursue. So that's typically the first conversation. Mm -hmm. And then if you think about everything that takes place between there and graduation, so we can help them even with, with job search, um, variables or graduate school path. Wow. So those are kind of really the two end games for most of our students. They're going to go to graduate school or go right into the workforce. So all of the things that take place in, bet take place in between there, preparing their resume and cover letters, preparing for interviews, um, learning how to search for a job, you know, how to find jobs. Um, we have networking events, etiquette dinners, um, career fairs, so on and so forth. So anything you could think of that a freshman would need to know that's related to career development and making those crucial decisions in the beginning of their academic careers yeah. all the way through graduation. So what do you find as the most difficult part on a freshman coming in and saying, I'm undecided? Really the big thing is to get them to start early. 
because actually it's a good thing to be undecided in our world. A lot of times students come in and they think they know exactly what they want to do um, and then they change their mind and then they start to panic. And I give you a perfect example. I've been teaching a freshman seminar for quite some time now and one of the first things I ask them before we get into the class content is how many of you know what career you want to go into? <laughs> About 90% of them raise their hands. Few undecideds always feel a little bit uncomfortable, but when I tell them you're actually in a better position and then inform the 90% that most of you are probably going to change your majors and or careers at some point in your lifetimes, they kind of give me that blank stare. And then when I bump into them at graduation four or five years later, they're giving me the, you were right, Mr. Tarver, you were right. So um, probably the biggest thing, again, going back to your question, just getting them to start early and knowing that career development is a process. Mm -hmm. It's not something you wait until your senior year to then start to engage with the Career Center. There are steps that you need to do each year along the process to make sure that you're ready come senior year. So do you, do you uh, get out at orientation and, and talk to the freshmen and tell them about the Career Center? How, how does it We work? actually talk to their parents at orientation. So we usually have a panel of um, different individuals from all of the offices throughout the campus. And we usually, our, me our message usually goes out to the parents. Um, we don't really get a lot of face time with students, and if you can imagine, their priorities during orientation are, you know, housing, financial aid, getting their courses, obviously. Yeah. Not that they're not interested in career services, but we kind of make sure that they take care of that stuff, especially getting classes. They have their hands full with that for the day, yeah. so we don't typically hit them with too much. But what our office has done the last two years is we do a summer mailing, but we do it to the parents letting them know that you need to make sure that your students get involved in our office early on. It's not something that you wait for. And I deliver that same message when I talk to the parents um, during the parent orientation part of the, the day. Great. So now, uh, a student that's a, a sophomore, why would they come into the, uh, the career center? Well, the sophomore year is actually the forgotten year, unfortunately, on a lot of campuses throughout the country. Um, the sophomore year is really crucial because that's ideally when they should be finalizing that major. If they don't finalize that major, parents don't want to hear, oh yeah, I'm going to be here a fifth or sixth year, <laughs> because that translates to dollars, of course, spent, sure. you know, spent on tuition. So sophomore year is really the key year because that's when they need to determine what path they're going to take. And we kind of flip the script as it comes to that here at Stockton. We try to get students to think about what career do they want to pursue mm. because you can major in one thing but there could be a lot of different careers that you could do um, as a result of having that major um, because we're a liberal arts institution our students are prepared to go into a lot of different areas regardless of what their careers may be mm -hmm. and again if you think about what I mentioned earlier about my major undergrad I was a political science major and then I went on to get a master's in business Buffalo State was also a liberal arts institution, so it prepared me for a lot of different opportunities. And I was fortunate along the way that I got some experience while I was in graduate school that led me to, th to this path. So we really want the students to think about occupational interests, not yeah. major. Once they can come up with that, we try to match them up with the major that's going to best prepare them for the occupation that they're interested in. So, so that brings up a good question then. Um, what, what types of occupations do you see a lot of students interested in mm -hmm. that moves them into a particular major? Mm -hmm. Right now, the allied health professions are hot. You know, the PT, the speech, the OT, um, those are really on fire right now. Extremely competitive because grad school is required, yeah. but those are really hot. Um, the traditional business paths, um, accounting, finance, they're all, you know, still always popular careers. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of social workers and a lot of people going into education, specifically teaching here. Even though we've seen a spike recently in a lot of students wanting to get into higher ed. And a lot of that can be attributed to the jobs that they hold on campus. Mm -hmm. Our campus is known for its community engagement and students working. And a lot of our students get some really rich experiences working in the different offices on campus. And I know at least the last five years, that experience has led a lot of our students to want to work and do what we do on a daily basis. So now junior year comes for a student, uh, what do they work on? Uh, networking like LinkedIn, mm -hmm. the resumes? What, what, so what junior year, hopefully they've been to our office and followed the plan according to script and they probably already have at least a working resume and they've hopefully met with their advisor. Our job at that point is to start thinking about internships. 
because you know most students have to work these days and they're going to take whatever job they can find mm -hmm. we now want them to start thinking about finding relevant types of experiences whether it be a job or shadowing or internship and we try to focus on the internship for some programs it's built in which makes it easy yeah. but our concern is those students who do not have it built into their curriculum is they don't see it as a graduation requirement so they, they yeah. what do I need to do that for <laughs> so our message to them is you really want to start thinking about getting some experience at that point so that we can enhance that resume over the next couple of years and then just as they should have been along all, all along we really encourage them to start really ramping up their participation in career fairs you mentioned networking events. We have a lot of career panels where we invite alumni back to kind of talk about their path. Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned business etiquette dinners. A um, lot of different special events that we'll have. That that junior year is kind of the time they want to start to dabble and start to participate in those events. Now, do you see a lot of students from a lot of the, the different years all going to those type of events? Or yeah. is it just really just juniors trying to do it? Yeah, the events are open to all. Um, we encourage freshmen to go as well and just to kind of look around and get the feel for something like a career fair, for example. Sophomores, the same thing, start to get a little bit more information. And depending on where they are developmentally, perhaps maybe seek an internship sophomore year. Mm -hmm. But junior year, if they have not, there needs to be a little bit more intentional effort and planning into how they're going to the career fair instead of just going and looking around, making sure that they're dressed appropriately, that the resume does market them appropriately. They know what to say to an employer. You know, they have their 30 second elevator pitch ready when they meet the employers for the first time. So now do you see a lot of um, um, meetings with the students talking about resume and about the interview process and how it all works? Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate on sure. some of that? Sure. Um, probably majority of our appointments are for resume critiques. Um, so typically a student kind of skips those beginning steps that they should have done, done during freshman, sophomore year, and they pop up like, hey, I need someone to look at my resume. And then we take that as an opportunity to kind of retrace our steps and say, hey, did you do this? Did you do that? Just to make sure that we haven't missed anything and that they're truly on track at that point. But most of our appointments are resumes, so a lot of the one-on-one -on -one spend time with resumes. Mm -hmm. And then as it evolves, next logical step is a cover letter. Then they start wanting to apply for jobs, but they're not necessarily sure how to look for jobs, excuse me, mm -hmm. and internships. Mm -hmm. So we show them how to find those resources, how to identify those employers, and then ultimately we start that mock interviewing process. Great. And, and uh, is there a lot of companies that come to the university or, sure, or sure. Uh, the kids just trying to find it all on their own? No. So we have a lot of different opportunities where the employers actually come to our students. So we have two career fairs every year. Um, in the fall and the spring, and right now our career fairs are up in the 110, 120 range for each event. So we usually have anywhere from 110 to 120 employers, variety of different occupations and fields. There's no one that's dominant over any other. So that's the first big major opportunity for students to connect with employers. As a result of our um, career fairs, a lot of employers will then set up some on-campus recruitment events, mm. whether it be on-campus interviewing, actually getting them into some classrooms, working with our faculty partners to make sure that not only the students who attended the career fairs are connecting with students, but maybe those students who weren't able to attend, we also like to put the employers in front of them. Mm -hmm. We actually have something called an employer in residence program, and the way we like to set it up is where the employer actually spends an entire day on campus. And part of this day might include one-on-one -on -one mock interviews. Um, depending on where that employer is in the hiring process, it could be actual interviews. Um, it's meetings with students one-on-one -on -one outside of that, maybe giving them career advice, usually getting them into a few classrooms to talk to faculty and students about their company and what they have to offer. Mm. And then usually if time um, permits, some time for them to kind of speak with us about what's new with the organization so that when we're talking to students, we can accurately um, send a message about what that company's looking for. And again, it's another contact for us to share with our students yeah. when they are looking for contacts within specific companies. So it's really a full day um, and a full gamut of opportunities that students have to connect with employers that is outside of them working the system on their own. So now uh, a student gets into a senior year. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening senior year? First of all, panic on their end, <laughs> usually. Um, but senior year, we're kind of just tightening everything up now. Hopefully they've already done some internships. 
Hopefully, if they've still had the work, they have some jobs that were relevant to what they're trying to do. And we're making sure that we have that as a nice package so that the resume is up to date, mm -hmm. marketing them effectively. Again, making sure that they know how to look for jobs, they know about all the services, they know mm -hmm. about all the events. And right at that point, it's really just continuing to apply for jobs um, and making sure that they hopefully have something before they graduate or are pretty close to getting something. Now, the other avenue that we haven't talked about, if we want to rewind just a little bit, is for those students going to graduate school. Mm -hmm. That junior year, for those students, the first part of the equation I mentioned where they're starting to get some experience, that's important and that's still in play, but that's when the graduate school application process starts. That's usually a year in advance in terms of applying which a big part of it is that personal statement, making sure that they're, again, marketing themselves accurately, and we help them with the personal statement process. So if you take the graduate school avenue and move that to senior year, hopefully those students are finishing up any last minute applications, but our idea situation is that they're starting to get some responses, um, at least early spring, so that they know where they're going to end up afterwards. And you, you said that there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, interest in the PT and things like that mm -hmm. that need uh, uh, that graduate school. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what are the students expecting when they get to the graduate school? What's, what's the help that they, they're getting once they get there? Once they get to graduate school? Well, believe it or not, a lot of students don't know that just because they're in a graduate program doesn't mean that they still can't use their career centers. Mm -hmm. And for our students, though they've graduated and let's say they've gone to a graduate program at another institution, they can still come back and use our services. We do try to get them to understand that if they're especially in something that specializes as a PT program, that the career center at their institutions probably going to be a little bit more helpful because that's the particular population that they have in mind in terms yeah. of their services. But we can also help them as well because, again, we have a, a pretty good variety of graduate schools and we do consider our graduate students as our stakeholders in terms of the types of services and programs that we provide. Great. Now, do you, do you see a lot of students coming back to the school and talking to you again or uh, do, do students use you after they graduate? Definitely, definitely. Typically, it's your more recent graduates that do, um, but we've had an influx lately, especially if you look at what's been going on with the economy, specifically in South Jersey. Um, excuse me, we've had some um, people who've been out of school for a while, some alum who've been out that have started to come back to us, but our, our services are still available to them. Really? Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now at the high school level, what does the career center do at the high school level with students that are in high school? Do mm -hmm. they do anything at the high school level? Yeah, we occasionally do get invited out to some of the high schools to kind of give them a jump start on what to expect, not just from college, but to get them to start thinking about careers. So we do some of that from time to time. Our admissions office does a spectacular um, job of getting students to come here, whether it's through traditional open houses or um, tour days. They also have other special days where they bring different groups of students in, and usually we're a part of that process of at least letting them know that we're here and what we do and what they should start to think about at that, that level. Yeah. A lot of our interaction with our high school students takes place during one of our four open houses during the year. So we have a table there and usually our staff is ready and, and willing to share any information we have to get them going and kind of really get them thinking about what they want to do if they do come to Stockton. And again, trying to hit the parents. Yeah. Because a lot of times when the students come for open house, I mean, they could be as young as sophomores and juniors sometimes, mm -hmm. and they don't know what to ask. Um, when they get to our table, they're not sure about that. It's not something they're thinking about. But the parents usually have yeah. their eye on what they should be thinking about. So a lot of our questions, especially at those time periods, um, come from parents. But when you get the students visiting open house in their senior year, then we tend to get a few more career-related questions. Now, now, how big is the department? Is it, do you have a big staff? A um, we've staff? grown. We've definitely grown. So there's myself, and we have five other professional staff, and then we have two administrative um, assistants. And now they're out there actively finding companies. What, what are their job entails? Well, the paradigm for employer development has changed quite a bit since my time in career development. I remember when I first started, it was like, okay, be off campus today. I have some employer visits. I'm going to be, you know, in this region for the day. If anybody needs anything, you know, shoot me an email or something like that. 
Um, now a lot of it is through our professional associations and kind of just sharing of contacts with other peers in the field. A lot of employers contact us directly even. So it's not as much going and doing these pitches to employers at their, at their locations as mm -hmm. there used to be back when I first got into the field. Um, but a lot of employers really investigate the institution through the web page and look at our academic profile. And a lot of them contact us in today's world. But every once in a while we do some site visits and we're starting to do a little bit more of that. Instead of the traditional site visits, we're kind of lumping it in with a, a tour. Mm -hmm. So we might bring a handful of students with us and it kind of make it more of a formal day. Um, so it's exposing the students to the company. It's also allowing us to make a contact with the company, getting the company to know a little bit about Stockton. So now, uh, I was also told that uh, the school is expanding in, in the Atlantic City uh, area. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of uh, services are you doing for that school that's, I guess, a branch of this school mm -hmm. uh, in Atlantic City? What, what, what kind of services mm -hmm. are there? Well, the vision is still being developed in terms of what is going to be in Atlantic City, but our office, actually, we just submitted a plan um, last week in terms of how we would staff that. So we would be providing hours down there. A um, few of our advisors would go over there a couple days a week just to make sure that the students who are over there have the same options of getting career counseling as the students who are on the Galloway campus. So until we kind of see what the demand is going to be, we're going to start off slow with a couple of advisors there part-time. Um, during the week and then if we need to expand then you know we'll do so accordingly. Now do you see more in hospitality and things like that uh, in that particular area being that the casinos are there, hotels are there, that kind of um, stuff? Again I'm not sure what the the larger macro level vision is for AC. Um, I think it would be a no-brainer for us to have our <laughs> hospitality at least connected, our hospitality program connected, um, but again right now I'm not sure what the the finite vision is for Atlantic City. <laughs> gotcha. Good. So, um, so now, in the process of of uh, the career services, um, what else are you are you handling with the students themselves? Mm -hmm. um, is there any extra uh, activity that you're you're giving to those students? In terms of career uh, development, yeah, or? career development, pretty much. Um, well, something unique that I think we have is we have a career community model, and I know Rutgers has a similar model where we're basically becoming more specialist in certain areas. So throughout my time in the field, we've pretty much been generalist. So if you're a business major, biology major, sociology major, I could see you and I could provide services. Over time, obviously, some of us are going to become better with assisting students in some majors versus other majors. But what we've done to make sure that all students are getting the maximum level of service is we've divided our services up into career communities. So each of our advisors is responsible for a cluster of occupations, mm -hmm. which means that they only focus on that. Yeah. So if you think back to the example of a generalist where I helped the business student, the sociology, the yeah, biologist, yeah. I'm able to hone in on, for example, all of my business students, which is very helpful when it comes to the employer development piece because now I can focus on just that cohort of students, provide them with more opportunities, while at the same time catering my services to them. So that's something that we've done that's kind of broadened, I think, what we're able to offer. Um, we've done a very good job of taking our services to our students as opposed to waiting for them to come into our office. We get into the classroom a lot. Um, believe last year we did something like maybe around 200 classroom presentations which I think when we, if you go back maybe 10 years ago, I think we were at like 35, 40 classroom presentations. Hmm. So we made a concerted effort to connect with students in the classroom. And all of that's only possible because of the exceptional relationships that we have with our faculty members here. Our faculty are incredible about inviting us into the classroom. But I think that's kind of an expansion of the traditional services that you would typically see at a career center. Again, I know Rutgers has that model. I believe we're the only two schools in the state of New Jersey that operate from right. that particular model. And and those four open houses, they're, they're spread out throughout the whole year? Yes, yes. Right, so yeah. so is uh, is that where you're doing also classroom stuff, or is that really just for the parents to come That's in? That's really talk? just more of an information fair, if you want to think of it, probably is the best way to characterize it. We have our table set up and usually some literature. Um, and sometimes some giveaways depending on what's going on with the budget that year. <laughs> um, just giving them some information about our office and what they should expect us to provide to their students when they come to Stockton. Yeah. Okay. So that's not really a formal 
presentation. Yeah. Now we do have something called a day in the life that's run through the admissions office, which gives students a realistic view of what it's like at Stockton. I know there are some classrooms taught during that day, just to give them a sense on what it's like to be in a classroom. Mm -hmm. And we have been involved in that capacity before in, um, in terms of a formal presentation, but typically it's just more of an information fair for our office. Great. Well, we're coming to the end of our show. All right. And uh, usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents out there sons and daughters uh, want to come to Stockton University. Mm -hmm. What advice do you want to give them? I would say, first of all, the education that we provide here, it, it really creates these well-rounded students. Our students have gone on and done some tremendous things. I think a lot of times parents get caught up in the name brand of a school, um, and our students compete with students from all institutions. And you know that's something that I think we're really proud of. Um, but the biggest thing I think a parent could tell their students is to start early. Do not wait until senior year, go to the career center, come home, tell me you can't find a job. Um, to think usually if people start freshman year and they stick with our timeline, they're positioned where they want to be when they get ready to graduate. Great. Well, thank you very much. For thank coming. you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.